Uh, I hope my uh, PowerPoint slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Yeah. It's very much visible. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, uh, uh, thanks uh, for inviting me in this particular session. And uh, I'm going to talk on making sense of pandemics, uh, reading uh, literature uh, with that perspective. In last two days, uh, most of you might have come across very interesting ideas regarding uh, pandemics from resource persons as well as variety of papers which are read uh, in this particular uh, webinar here. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to take uh, you all to a pictorial journey of a pandemic poem, a uh, very recently written poem by a, a current poet laureate of UK, United Kingdom, Simon Armitage. And the title of the poem is very interesting, uh, very popular word, the buzz of uh, the word nowadays that is lockdown and uh, let us take a kind of a pictorial journey of uh, this pandemic poem lockdown and then let us try to see uh, how we can read pandemic literature or also how can we write uh, 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 pandemic literature uh, for our times yeah. uh, the poem begins with uh, the situation uh, that comes uh, 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 that is reminder of 1665-66, the Great Plague of London. That is a reminder in, in this particular poem. Uh, it begins with that reference. Uh, these are some of the pictorial uh, images of the Black uh, uh, Great Plague uh, epidemic of 65-66 uh, 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 there. Uh, the poem begins uh, 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 here. It is, uh, it is a dream sequence. The entire poem is a dream sequence. The speaker of the poem is uh, uh, is dreaming uh, and two scenes are dreamt by the speaker of uh, this poem uh, lockdown by simon armitage uh, it begins in this way i am reciting some lines and then we are seeing some of the pictures and i couldn't escape it begins with and and i couldn't escape the waking dream the waking that's a dream sequence the first dream sequence that comes here and i couldn't escape the waking dream of infected fleas flea the image we are seeing here plague flea which is responsible for the plague uh, uh, in past uh, here uh, that, so i couldn't escape the waking dream of infected fleas in the wrap and weft of soggy cloth of taylor's this this image uh, a, a kind of a caricature is the caricature of flea, infected flea and then infected human body uh, uh, there. Uh, of infected fleas in the wrap and weft of soggy cloth of Taylor's hearth. Taylor's hearth uh, in old im, im, e y a m, it is im, pronounced as e m popularly. The correct word is in. It is in, in the Derby region of England, far away from London at that. So this poem is reminding of a plague infected small town in the Derby region of England. And that, that small village is known as Im. They're a little bit far away from London, but still infected by, by, by uh, the plague. I'm, I'm repeating the lines again. And I couldn't escape the waking dream of infected fleas in the wrap and weft of soggy cloth by the tailor's hearth in old im. Then couldn't unsee, then I couldn't unsee the boundary stone. In the picture, we can see a boundary stone. This was a very interesting thing that was, that is recorded uh, uh, with, the, with the history of the im and the plague of 1965-66. I couldn't unsee the boundary stone that cock-eyed dice with its six dark holes uh, this stone which is still uh, 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 available there uh, in, in in our derby region with several holes the poetry says cock-eyed dice with its six dark holes thimbles thimbles uh, this thimble thimble is a word means uh, uh, thimble is this uh, 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 the protector of, of the fingers when we needle something that is called thimble Thimbles, uh, this uh, this is uh, that, that stone which is referred here, boundary stone. Thimbles brimming with vinegar wine, purging the plagued coins. Thimbles 
brimming with vinegar. We can see the liquid in this stone, vinegar wine, purging. Today we use sanitizers a lot. Huh? That then it was vinegar wine, and it was the coins. When people used to do transaction uh, or, or from one one city, one, one village to another village, then uh, at, at the border of the village there is a stone, and then there are holes in the stone, and it is filled with vinegar wine. People will put coin there. so it will get sanitized and then people will communicate uh, the, the exchange of currency will happen and the uh, the, the sanitizer was uh, uh, vinegar wine which brought to mind uh, this this site uh, this eem uh, this soggy cloth of tailor's hearth the eem the boundary stone poet writes here which brought to mind the sorry story of emot sidel and roland tory it brought to mind a very amazing love story of the people living in this village and a nearby town stony middle town roland tory the lover was living in a nearby town uh, uh, village stony middleton and emot sidel emot sidel was living in this particular village eem village and they both used to meet uh, uh, on the on the border of both the villages some stories say that they were engaged with each other some say they were the lovers so sorry story of emot sidel and roland tory star crossed lovers on either side of uh, star crossed lovers is an amazing archetype uh, uh, a very famous critic uh, of archetypes of literary criticism north of fry has has told that star cross lovers is a very popular archetype and cultures all around the world have written stories about star crossed lovers laila majnu uh, uh, sirhi farhad romeo and juliet uh, the similar kind of pair of star crossed lovers is roland tory and emot sidel but almost forgotten thanks to simon armite that we again recall the, the another pair of lovers the star crossed lovers and in the backdrop of plague the backdrop of pandemic this love story so the line that goes is like the star crossed lovers on either side of quarantine line this this picture that we see is a picture of uh, the landscape there uh, it's a it's a cuckleet delf né, where they used to meet and it, it it is sometimes filled with water also so in some images we see that there are two lovers and in between there is a river flowing in between né, this so uh, river is abound now here the poet makes use of that that the depth that that valley yeah, a dell a dell or a rivulet a stream of rivulet as quarantine line yeah, in this uh, poem whose wordless courtship span the river till she came no longer and then it so happened in the in, in the legend that the im village many people were infected by plague and the entire family of uh, Uh, Imolet was also uh, uh, Imot also was infected and she died uh, uh, when when in April 1960s uh, uh, 1656 when the uh, the plague uh, reduced its power uh, 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 at that time when the lover comes and enters the village there was nobody uh, the entire family was dead uh, that so that is the love story whose wordless courtship spanned the river till she came no longer. Uh, and uh, the these are some of the interesting pictures of this village eem village 19th century engraving of a cross uh, uh, there which is a reminder of the deadly plague uh, there this is the eem church where the people were buried who died in this plague uh, this is a wonderful painting uh, a stained glass window of eem church uh, depicting the plague outbreak uh, and in this we find in this uh, uh, right hand side below corner the, the story of Uh, uh, Imot and Roland, Imot Siddle and Roland Tory. The story is painted in the glass in the church uh, of Im. Uh, uh, also, this is first part of the poem. Uh, this this is uh, Simon Armitage's poem. Uh, first part of this poem, uh, lockdown is this. Second part of the poem. It begins in this way, like but slept again. This was the first dream sequence, and then I slept again. and dreamt this time this time the dream is going from west to east and in this dream he re he recalls yaksh uh, the poem macduff a very famous poem by 
uh, uh, poet Kalidas, uh, Meg Dutam, and the, the character, uh, the, the voice of that poem is a male figure known as Yaksh. Uh, I dreamt this time of the exiled Yaksh sending word to his lost wife on a passing cloud. Meg is a cloud and he is in exile. He is thrown out of the town by the king. His beloved beautiful wife Yakshini is in the city. He is somewhere far away in the forest. Sitting on the hilltop of the forest, he is talking with the cloud and tells to the cloud that you become my messenger. Dutam, Dutam, that is messenger. You become my Dut, my messenger and take my message to my, my wife, my beautiful wife, wife in the town. So that is the idea which the uh, poets, I mean Armitage, poet laureate from UK is connecting with the story of Emote Seidel, Roland Torrey and uh, that is the, the story from the West and this is the story from the East uh, here. To his lost wife on a passing cloud and see the beautiful imagery that is used by Simon Armitage while talking about this, this particular uh, uh, poem. Uh, keep in mind the imageries that we have seen earlier in the first part of the poem and the imageries that we are going to see when Simon Armitage is remembering Meg Dutam, a poem from India, uh, a poem from the East here. A cloud that followed an earthly map of camel trails and cattle tracks. The cloud with the message from Yaksh, the husband for Yakshini, the wife, the camel is, uh, the, the cloud is now trailing and uh, the, the landscape through which cloud is going from the middle of India to the northern side of India, the cloud is moving on. The movement of the cloud on the earthly map is from the central of India to the northern side of, uh, of uh, uh, India. And on the path, the cloud is passing through camel trails and cattle tracks, streams like necklaces, beautiful rivulets, huge rivers like Ganges, Ganga River, Yamuna River, and innumerable rivulets, streams like necklaces, fan-tailed peacocks, fan-tailed peacocks, Simon Armitage is bringing out imageries from India, the exotic India, the beautiful India fan-tailed peacocks and painted elephants, painted elephants, embroidered bedspreads, embroidered, the embroidery, the Indian uh, art, embroidery, be, uh, bedspreads, but this embroidered bedspreads is of meadows and hedges. This is a rather uh, a far-fetched imagery of the bedsheet, but the, the artistic embroidery uh, which is represented uh, in this poem uh, very much an Indian art, bedspreads of meadows and hedges, bamboo forests, bamboo forests and snow-hated peaks. When the cloud as a messenger of love from Yaks to Yakshini is moving towards Himalaya, towards the northern part of India, from bamboo forests to snow-hated peaks through waterfalls and creeks, passing through water, waterfalls and creeks, the hieroglyphs of wide-winged cranes, the hieroglyphs of wide-winged cranes and the glistening lotus flower after rain and the glistening water flower, the uh, uh, lotus flower after rain, the air hypnotically see through rare, the journey of ponderous one at times long and slow but necessarily so this is a very interesting poem lockdown title and see the mythical technique which uh, simon armitage is using to connect the two corners of the world the east and then the west this poem when we try to see the importance of this poem in our times or we try to connect this poem in a larger context of literatures about pandemics or or a normal daytime, which we what we find here is that this poem is trying to remind us of a ballad of East and West, a very famous poem by Rudyard Kipling. Huh? Oh, East is East and West is West, and never the twain shall meet till earth and sky stand presently as God's great judgment seat. But there is neither East nor West, but there is neither east nor west border 
nor breed nor birth when two strong men stand face to face through they came from the ends of the earth through two strong the east and the west as human beings this they face each other and they come this is that idea which rudyard kipling wanted to say the east and west to meet uh, each other or a very famous lines written by rabindranath tagore in gitanjali where the mind is without fear uh, this what he says where the world has not broken has not been broken up into fragments uh, by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection and the clear reason of stream has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit this poems suddenly come into mind when we read poem lockdown by simon armitage these poems specifically lockdown by simon armitage is here to answer huh, the questions about the broken world order when we see today's phenomena like when now let us come down to our day our time in pandemic and what pandemic has done to us and how we find that what we are seeing is a shattered face of humanity there is one i see the two eyes in this image one is an awestruck and fearful eye the other is a vengeful and threatening eye the one world is the world which is showing uh, the, the, the eye of fear to the people the other one is threatened by this this is how the world is shattered in different capacities and we will see some of the examples about how this becomes very uh, interesting part uh, uh, also this poem also tells us uh, allegorically when we see this pandemic poem lockdown uh, it says that it is time pandemics or epidemics or calamities is the time that we have to join our hands together if we will keep on fighting among each other we are not going to solve the problem of pandemic and what we are doing is we are doing lots of debates and discussions about pity things also and we are seeing the cracks which are emerging suddenly in our societies from one society to a global order of society lots of rifts are being seen and we are going to see some of the examples of those rifts which are which are emerging suddenly as cracks on the mirror or the shattered shattered uh, mirror pieces there and that is why reading pandemic literature and simon armitage's voice of east and west and uh, the picture of the, the 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 village struck by the plague as well as the beautiful image of india uh, are necessary to be remembered in this particular world order so today's time in which we live where we are shattered we are we are we are broken into narrow uh, domestic walls and we are debating so many things it is not that these debates were not there they were very much there but nowadays there is a tremendous way that we are debating on this thing uh, the first point about food i will come later on uh, on this the debate about this uh, there but i i can recall uh, this and i can bring to your mind that when people say uh, uh, many uh, in india like this middle middle india or the northern india uh, uh, they say that uh, uh, the virus is spreading this zoonotic virus is spreading because people are eating animals and chinese people they eat everything anything that is moving is eaten by chinese people and so many such viruses which are leading towards epidemics and pandemics are coming from china and why because non vegetarianism the food eating zoonotic animals uh, is there so the debate about is being vegetarian a good idea or a non vegetarian or a purely vegan but this debates are becoming very strong and very wild also there is very interesting answer given to this debate in 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 one cinema which is also a literary represent we'll come to see that also the rift between rich and poor is is happening a lot we have seen the pictures of poor suffering a lot huh, in 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 our times there uh, so many people uh, sleeping on the railroad and they are cut down by the by the, by, the, uh, by 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 the train uh, uh, so many people died on the road so many people gave birth to the people on the road and they also died so uh, the rift while the lockdown yeah, became a kind of a vacation for the rich people who has got a shelter who has got no worry about the food and clothing and a home it was a beautiful vacation a break from the the humdrum of busy life but for the other people it was it was uh, unimaginable torture unimaginable uh, uh, a kind of uh, 
uh, havoc uh, uh, it played in the lives of the poor people uh, there. Why we are seeing all these things, uh, all these debates is also is a very interesting point, we'll, we'll, which we are going to make in the conclusion. Capitalism and socialism, the debate again comes into, into play. With that also, the, the idea, I'm, I'm skipping two points to say healthcare, private healthcare, the capitalist model of healthcare, or a welfare state of healthcare idea, which becomes uh, interesting uh, here. I, I would remind you that uh, a Cuban healthcare system, uh, Cuba is not a capitalist country. There is a socialism, uh, communism in, in Cuba. And Cuban doctors, uh, uh, they helped people worldwide. In Italy, when the outbreak was out of control, it was the team of doctors from Cuba that, that went and they helped others. So Cuba gives us an example of a socialist healthcare system or a, a socialist kind of uh, economic system, whereas America is a representation of capitalist healthcare system. Everything is paid service in America. And, and today we see that America is the, at the top. Cuba is nowhere in the list of people dying because of pandemics. America is at the top and American healthcare system, though it is one of the best healthcare systems in the world, is struggling a lot. Uh, it is at the top in the, in the people suffering. It is at the top in the people dying because of this pandemic uh, uh, also. So whether we should think of this system or another system, that debate is happening a lot in India, uh, uh, private versus government and or, 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 or several kinds of debate that is going on in and around these kinds of things there. When we look at the, 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 the order of the state, uh, like whether it is a welfare state idea or it should be everything should be private, like you pay money and you get service. India is, is, is a kind of a country. We have seen lots of Garib Kalyan Yojanas, the, the Yojanas for the poor people. The recent one, the last one, is also very interesting where the Prime Minister of India announced that 80 crore people of India, it is, it is uh, more than 55% of the total population of India, more than 80 crore people of India will be given free food up till November. Up till November it will be given. Now it means that half of India is still struggling to get food also this roti uh, uh, the food also forget about the shelter and other kinds of a thing there and if uh, if we do not take care of this measures in terms of welfare state and sociological concerns then perhaps we are not understanding that what kind of society we are living with what kind of people we are living with that perhaps is still not understood if you do not see so that, that debate about Capitalism, socialism, the welfare state idea or the private health care and, and the food security system became very interesting. Scientific temperament was the another debate which was happening a lot and, and religious belief system uh, uh, also. We have seen that uh, the, the, the religious places were, were forced to close down in, in this uh, uh, epidemic. It was not allowed to open uh, uh, there. And, and uh, obviously the people who are atheists, they got a kind of a, of a ground to say that believe in scientific temperament, uh, religious belief system will not cure the disease like coronavirus. And so this debate and, and then pseudoscience. Uh, so many uh, of home remedies, which are not scientifically proven kind of a thing. So even the journal like Nature, which is one of the most leading journals uh, uh, with highest impact factor in science, has also had to say to the scientific community that at least you tell people that this this remedy is like uh, if you will just have an energy being generated by deepak uh, by a candle by a light or by, by just making a sound of a clamping of utensils is not going to cure us from corona uh, so many people started believing in that idea of thali bajao the Ajalao kind of a thing as if that, that is going to be a cure for the coronavirus and pandemic. Pseudoscience was, was, was ruling the minds of the people in a tremendous way. Now th this goes very near with the religious belief system and so scientific temperament became very necessary also. This, this we also have to, su we suffered with infodemic also. Lots of messages which are wrong messages about the disease and the cure of disease and for that also Lancet and MIT Technology Review have to give a special editions and, and articles to tell people that be careful about what you are reading on Facebook, YouTube, 
this is a rather a kind of pandemic uh, or infodemic kind of a thing which is more harmful than the pandemic that we remember everything is literature everything that is written is literature everything that is spreading among society and culture in form of whatsapp message or a youtube video or a facebook post or a tweet everything somewhere is a form of a literature and when we do a kind of a cultural study of contemporary societies each and every text becomes very important for for us to see yeah, uh, here yeah, in this, this 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 context there last part here uh, is individuality and privacy over collective health which also became a very interesting point of a debate when, when we all are informed by government to install the, the Arogyo Setu app in our mobile phones, at the same time, there were many voices which said that perhaps government will spy over all the citizens if they do. Now, we have two choices. One choice is that, well, if this app, app helps me in my, in, in, in my health, as a collective health, it is not only my personal health, but if I am infected, I can spread that virus to other people. So even if I care for other people, I should wear mask. I should use this app. But if I am spied, if everything in, done in my mobile phone or my movement from one place to another place, because location is owned in this app, is being pressed by governments, then what may happen? Then what may happen? So this debate also became a very interesting debate in, in this time about the privacy of the people. Uh, and then the collective safety and security of uh, the, the people uh, 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 there. I was talking about the, the, the first idea about the food and, and the other point also uh, in this. Uh, there. Everything is captured in one or the other way by literature. All these points, which are a very haphazard viewpoints, it seems to be. Some we are talking about poor people, some we are talking about the privacy, some we are talking about the judgments given by government for the healthcare services, somewhere there is Cuban healthcare service, somewhere there is American healthcare services, socialism, welfare state. Well, it all seems to be a hodgepodge ideas about several kinds of things. But we need a literary expression of all this vagueness that is going around us in this pandemic. And that is where we read pandemics and how it can get represented into, uh, into uh, uh, literary expressions in an allegorical form uh, also. I would like to give two examples here of these two films where how they read pandemics. These are very current pandemics being read by cinema. Uh, before I give examples of this, the endings of the films on, on pandemics, contagion and virus, I also would like to recall Farooq Dondi. Farooq Dondi once has said that uh, in, in context of what Homi Ke Baba has said about nation and narration uh, in a post-colonial debate about nation and the narration. Homike Baba has a very interesting contribution. But Farooq Dhondi said that in contemporary India, contemporary times, if any form of literature that is that is a lingua franca or which is representing nation and the anxieties of the nation in a proper way, uh, then it is cinema, not literature. But if literature is much lagging behind, the kind of work which lockdown a poem uh, written by Simon Armitage is there. Uh, uh, it, it is not easy to find such a literary expression so quickly coming out uh, there. But cinema is there very quickly to respond to the anxieties of the time in which we are living. And that's why studying cinema as a form of literature is also very, very interesting uh, part. Contagion and virus, the endings of the film, both dealt with the virus, one, one in, in uh, the Ebola virus in America, the another one in Kerala. Uh, virus is a Malayali film uh, uh, and it was of a recent 2019 Ebola outbreak in Kerala. Contagion obviously was a 2011 film uh, which was talking about outbreak in imaginary situation in America there. Endings of the last sequence of, if you have not seen the film, I, I strongly suggest to watch at least the last sequence because in the last part they are showing that how this virus emerged and how it spread among the human beings. And in both the films, it, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the beginning point is similar, that is zoonotics. Huh? It, is, it, is, it is the bat, huh? it is the bat. Huh? The plagues, earlier plagues were, were, uh, were, were uh, uh, moving on uh, uh, through rats, uh, rodents, rats, and then those flea, flea sitting on the body of the rat or, uh, or having the saliva of the rat and then biting human being or the food objects and 
flea were the carrier, but along with that, rats and rodent were the carrier. Now, in both this, you know, we see that uh, uh, is uh, the carrier of, of, of this. Contagion gives a very interesting uh, answer to this, and that is that if we are going to destroy forests in the name of our uh, our our uh, development or our economy, if you want, this debate is between economy and ecology. Economy versus ecology. I want to do development, and so I need to expand myself, my roads, my dams. Uh, I, I, I want to tie down the rivers. I want to use the water. I want to use the forest products. So I am encroaching in forest regions. And because of that encroachment, we are cutting down trees. And so the, 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 the animals which are supposed to live in the forest are, 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 are homeless. And so they come down to the localities of the people. They start, now this is the point, but this, this, this animals, which were never supposed to be in contact with human beings, and there was no chance of, of, uh, of the virus to spread from animal to humans. It happens because we are encroaching the spaces of forests, environment. And so those, those animals are coming in our localities and because of that, contagion says that the bat was eating an, a, a, a banana and the banana drops down and then the another object uh, is uh, uh, having that. And that pig uh, which is eating that infected, virally infected banana is taken for food in a, in a hotel, in a restaurant. And then when the, uh, when the chef is making uh, 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 the dish out of that, he gets infected. And then it started spreading. Huh? So that was one ecology versus economy. The reason that contagion tries to say virus. Uh, film had a very interesting interpretation of this uh, this very idea that obviously it is bad. Obviously it is the contact of human beings with the bat and it is a spread. But here it is not food. Huh? It is not that 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 animal was anywhere connected with the food of the people and it transferred through. Uh, uh, the food. Uh, uh, very interestingly, we can keep this in mind that Indian habits of cooking food is so different from the Western that in uh, in India, when even the, the 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 animals which are which are taken as food, when they are cooked, uh, uh, there is, there are least chances that any viral or bacteria can remain alive on the body of that. So the the, the cooking habits or the the, the culture of cooking also matters a lot in this but that, that is not the point of virus virus tries to say that the protagonist uh, the, the person who got the, was the zero patient the first patient of that he was traveling through the forest and found on the way a baby bat a baby bat was lying there and out of sympathy for animal out of sympathy for the bat he lifted the bat and put it near uh, on, on a nearby branches and then he got infected from the bat. So, so that was care for animal. It was not taking it as a food, but that was a care for the animal, which was given. Now, these are also very interesting interpretations that we get from, from reading pandemic literature when we see the endings of the film, Contagion and, and, and Virus uh, also. In our time, in, in this time of crisis like pandemic, uh, we face two particularly important choices. This is you will know Harari. Who, say, who said this? The first is between totalitarian surveillance and citizen empowerment. The second is between nationalist isolation and global solidarity. And this is a very interesting observation made by UL Noah Harari. What is happening now? Governments all over the world are taking this as an opportunity to impose totalitarian surveillance among everybody. And instead of empowering the citizens, they are becoming empowered and, and, and controlling the citizens. People are choiceless. People do not have any scope. If the government says that, well, lockdown from this to this day, we do not have a choice. Says so use this app, we are going to use that app because our health is a prime concern for us. In this time, if uh, the governments Take this opportunity to, to impose totalitarian surveillance uh, uh, instead of empowering citizens, then what may happen? A grave concern which you will know Harari is uh, uh, addressing. The second one is nationalist isolation and global. This is what we are seeing now very clearly. 
Donald Trump in America says that America is for the white people, the Asians should go off, and many Indians are, are, are struggling to stay in America. This is what it, it happens there. Obviously, India also, Atmanirbhar India, self reliant India, make in India, made in India, don't use Chinese product, use Indian product, and lot many kinds of things. Now, this is nationalist isolation. Instead of being globally sol solid, huh, what Simon Armitage wanted to say in lockdown eh, or Tagore or Rudyard Kipling wanted to say was about global solidarity. When we read literature in the times of pandemics, we have to see that our literature speaks about global solidarity of human beings rather than nationalist isolation. Simon Armitage do not write about nationalist isolation. He is making imagery together, this image from Eam in Derby region of UK and then from a Mekdut, a Sanskrit poem from India. Uh, East and West. He says that we require a global solidarity in the time. No, but at the same time, what is happening nowadays is nationalist isolation. When we read uh, the real life or when we read the literature of the day or when we sit down to write the literature of the day, we have all these choices, whether we want ecology or economy, uh, lives or livelihood. Whether we want totalitarian surveillance or citizen empowerment, whether we want nationalist isolation or global solidarity, we have to make choices among all these things when we when we sit down to write literature, when we sit down to read literature uh, uh, here. We badly need allegorical representation of the pandemics in literature. In past, for example, there are famous works like Joss uh, Saramago's Blindness, Beauty Saloon by Marin Balatin, The Plague by Albert Camus. Obviously, plague is an archetypal text for pandemic literature, but even Beauty Saloon, uh, uh, Blindness is an amazing text. And see the allegory that they used in those, those works. Uh, in Blindness, uh, the, 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 the plague is of such a, such a kind, is a, is a particular kind of plague, which turns people into white blindness. Not the black blindness, not the dark blindness, but white. The people who are infected by this, this virus, they, they see everything white, uh, white blindness. This, now see the imagery uh, that we, today what, what is happening, why, why this text is important for us also is that we are uh, today, we are, we are blinded by the halogenated political speeches, Halo, halogen, halogen is a lamp uh, and the glow of the halogen lamp is so bright that when we see for a while in the halogen lamp, we, we go blind for a while. That, that brightness of the lamp is so powerful that it turns us into blindness. The dark spots are visible when we see that. So the blindness is today's allegory also. Are we not blinded by halogenated political speeches? Are we not fooled by those kinds of things? We need for today's time also a very interesting allegory like blindness, which Josh Saramago said. Uh, this beauty saloon again the saloon where people went for beautifying themselves that saloon is turned into isolation ward and now it is a containment zone it is an isolated ward and people are staying there and waiting for death somewhere where you are going there to beautify yourself now you are going there waiting for your death waiting to see that the body is eroded the body evaporates the body is destroyed right? the same place that's a very interesting allegory that it tries to put there the plague obviously is a master 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 text by albert Camus, and the allegory was nazi occupation uh, uh, nazi occupation of some part of france and based on that he said so his his plague his rodents his viruses were Nazis and their occupation, that's their spread across the Europe is taken as, 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 as this particular thing. See what, what uh, Albert Camus wrote in, in the plague, yes. Uh, he wrote, I, I quote from that, that hostile to the past, impatient of the present and cheated of the future. I repeat again, hostile to the past, impatient of the present and cheated of the future. We were much like those whose man's justice and hatred forces to leave behind prison bars. See, our, our lockdowns are nothing but prison bars. We are locked in our own homes and we readily agreed to be locked down because we thought that there is, there is the, the health, there is the, 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 uh, the, the safety of so many people and so readily I go down to lockdown. 
but this very imprisonment into our own homes and be an amazing allegory for our time also. These are written in Portuguese, Spanish and French. We, we wait for such a kind of a text in our time uh, uh, also uh, there. If you want to recall one more text and we want to read Oedipus uh, uh, Rex, uh, Sophocles' famous play in this context, then it also has a very interesting uh, allegory for our, our time uh, uh, in which we are living uh, uh, today. Uh, medieval interpretation of that text that uh, Thebes, uh, uh, the Thebes where uh, Oedipus is the king is plague stricken. The play begins with uh, uh, this very idea that the entire space is plague stricken and people are asking to the king to do something like uh, this and they all think that this heaven is angry on us and it, mean, it means that humans have done some wrong deeds and who is that human who has done the wrong deed he is the king oedipus himself is the wrongdoer oedipus is the one who has murdered the king the father who has married the mother and has, uh, has become the father uh, of children also this wrongdoing is done by the king himself the leader himself we have amazing leadership nowadays around the globe bolsonaro from brazil Putin, Putin in Russia, uh, Jinping in China, Trump in, 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 in America, and 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 they are uh, they are such a kind of uh, displaying such a kind of leadership that people are afraid. What kind of leadership we want today? The examples are like New Zealand or Canada. Huh? Just Jacinda, huh? the Prime Minister in New Zealand, or Justin Trudeau in Canada. They are a different kind of leadership, but they are not very popular now. Uh, what who are popular is Bolsonaro in Brazil, Putin, Jinping, Putin, and this. Now, can we interpret that this this plague, this pandemic, and the leadership which also is controlling the world? Can anybody write a literature uh, for with with this kinds of idea or allegorical representation of this or 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 not? Finally, we also need to see the absence of pandemics from our literature, not only the present but also the absence. If there is a work of art written of this time and if the writer is not referring at all to the pandemic then then what do we see and, and as an example to this the how to read the absence of pandemics from a literature i suggest to read this julius brudy's work the resurrection of the body a new reading of marvels to his coy mistress a beautiful small love poem uh, to his coy mistress by andrew marvel but this is a new reading wherein we do not question the poetic liberty or artistic sensibility when we raise this question that why poet is not talking about plague which was which has spread across in the times of andrew marvel also what we can try to see is that who is that poet perhaps the poet belongs to a higher strata of society where he is not affected by the poverty of the people where he is not affected by even the plague they, they, that space, but perhaps poet is writing for those people only. It means not an individual person, but a voice of the cultural group or identity that is represented by the artistic voice. It is also to question how different people in a given culture, at a given moment of time, in a given calamity or epidemic, react to the hardships. How do the people react to the very notion of death also? Death imagery in Koi Mistress. Uh, uh, is also there, but the death is not at all connected with the plague idea or pandemic idea. So reading absence of pandemics in literature also can be an interesting idea to read about the pandemics and, and, and literature also. Finally, the last slide of my presentation is this about a very interesting work being published uh, recently that is Viral Modernism by Elizabeth Outka, The Influenza Pandemic and Interwar Literature. 1918, uh, uh, Spanish influenza. Uh, uh, we are talking a lot about Spanish influenza of 19, which happened just after First World War. So between two wo world wars, first and the second, there is this, this plague. Uh, we all might have studied modernist literature, T.S. Right? Eliot, Virginia Woolf, famous writers, and, and this. And what is very interesting is, is, is that we never referred to Spanish influenza. We referred a lot to world wars and the history of English literature also talks a lot about world war, but nowhere, almost rarely, uh, uh, 
but very very surprisingly absent is spanish influenza from our literature as well as from the history of english literatures uh, 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 also so this this work becomes very interesting to see that who were the writers who were writing about catherine anne porter thomas wolf even virginia wolf t s eliot w b yeats how they talked about uh, about this disease uh, in popular culture uh, and resurgence of spiritualism which became necessary part of uh, this also the voices that surfaced through the exquisite readings of this well researched well argued study offer insight not only into the tragic experience of this devastating disease but also into how those affected uh, uh, use literary and cultural forms to make sense of that experience hence into the nature of storytelling itself how our storytelling is affected how our allegories are affected it's a very interesting reading viral modernism but the point that is very interesting is that that uh, uh, so far uh, when we refer to modernist literature uh, at that time or reading the, the the history of the 20th century english literature uh, there was almost no reference to spanish influenza that are we going to forget this pandemic also are we going to write about it or are we not going to write about it what influence will this pandemic will have on, on in our allegories in our, our metaphors in our storytelling and everything becomes very very interesting eh? also thank you all of you for uh, listening to me and giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, to have uh, a brief talk about uh, uh, reading uh, literature uh, uh, here yeah? thanks a lot if there are any questions i am here to answer uh, the, the questions yes uh, thank you so much sir Uh, good and all that. Uh, okay, the session is open for even I have a question, but before that, I want to. Audience. Sir, uh, maybe then I will go with my question, sir. Uh, yeah, please. Sir, please, my yeah. Yeah, sir, I, yes, sir, you were audible. talking about, talking about uh, Andrew Marvel, right, sir? The, uh, yeah. Andrew Marvel to his coy mistress. He it was just a. Uh, uh, I read uh, to his coy mistress. It was uh, a love poem and all that. But this reading talks about why. Uh, Andrew Marvel uh, is not talking anything about plague. Is that right, sir? Am I mean, getting your point right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is that, yeah, exactly. Any writer has his own idea, his own perspective. To write, huh? hmm. so any writer has got their own idea to it. Yeah, sir, now even if now this is a pandemic uh, situation and it doesn't mean that we need to mourn for the situation, we can also be happy, right? So it is my own perspective. Why that is questioned? That is my mm -hmm. question. Why? Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, why yeah, it uh, is okay, questioned I, I, that? I, I got it. I got your your question. Yeah. Uh, I, I have posted one link yes, in the chat yes. box also. Uh, you can re re people can read it thoroughly also. Well, but what what is, uh, uh, Jules uh, Jules Brody is questioning uh, is this that uh, when we read a literature, it is it is the choice of the poet. We don't say to poet that you have to write. This reading okay. is not to make poets or writers telling them that you have to write on. It is not for that. It is reading. Eh? And, and we have undergone reader response theory and all those things in 20th century. So when we uh, uh, oh. sit down to read a poem, we question the text. We don't question the poet. We question the text. Now in that text, if, if, if there, there is something at the same time, what what habit of mind deconstruction has given to us post structuralist is that read the absence also read them so when people are speaking for example if you want to speak about death uh, two lovers and they said that even if we'll die uh, and then your body will be in the vault marble vault and maybe uh, the the germs will be eating away your body yeah okay. that, that, that poem refers to that imagery Yes, yes. Body might be eaten away by the worms. Worms, yes. Uh, yeah, that is. So now, when you already have an imagery of death and body eaten away by something, 
Okay. And there was very recently there was a plague wherein also fleas are eating away the body. Oh, yeah. Plague is eating away the body. Then there was a possibility that why the poet uh, has not referred to the imagery of plague or a pandemic uh, to write this. Okay. And the answer is that it means that, that yeah, it means that that experience of pandemic was perhaps outside the arena of the poet. It means the poet is a very rich person. Okay. Poet belongs to a leisure class where this leisure class people are almost unaffected by pandemics. pandemics. That is that is the point. So uh, the, the speaker of the poet also is a rich person. Uh, the beloved also might be the rich person. That's why they talk about going to the Ganges and bringing out jewels from uh, uh, the East also. So it yes. means that this, this literature represents a, a strata of society which is super rich. It doesn't mean that that literature represents entire culture. So our, our, we, we enter into that debate and we see that literature do not represent the entire culture. It represents the culture of only those who has a voice, only those who can speak. That's why these images, the people on the roads, they won't have anything to write about their agony or anxiety. They, they won't have pen and paper. They won't have the, uh, 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 the, the power to write poetry also. So uh, it, if, if it is not written, it is lost from history. It is lost from memory. And when liter literature becomes a, a kind of a historian of the time, at that time, so many people's anxieties are almost unwritten. They, they go. That is, that is uh, so when we take literature as, as the historian of the time, at that time, these kinds of reading of absence become something very, very interesting uh, uh, part of uh, doing that, uh, that, that, that also. Okay. I hope that answers. Yes, sir. Okay. Actually, the, the thing is that yeah. all the literatures that have been celebrated are only tragedies, right? We yeah. actually don't. I don't know. That is a kind of a thing. We always look at the other side of uh, maybe maybe that is uh, no that is a kind of a, this also sir always mm -hmm. truth or even the celebrated literatures are always tragical. Yeah 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 well, well like well we no, we have, we have made not a that celebrated. Yeah, we have made binaries of comedy and tragedy. And then we said that tragic literature oh. are more serious literature, comedies yeah. are superficial kind of a thing. Uh, uh, but, but this very gross generalization yes. Yes. That is done. Uh, uh, comedies deal with the superficiality of life. That is why they are not celebrated like tragedy. And tragedies deal with much uh, philosophical depth also. So when we are in moments of crisis, we are deeply philosophical also. When we are very happy, we live perhaps a very shallow life. And when in the, the moments of crisis are always the moments of pondering very deep inside. We have a lot many uh, literature where people when they when they suffered from illness or accidents that gave them a time and space to go deep inside themselves and then then come out with gems of ideas also. Uh, maybe maybe that is perhaps uh, the thing that uh, it, it happens in that way. Oh, yes, sir. thank you so much. Right, questions please, others, audience, we'll have one or two questions and we'll move on uh, to the other speaker, please. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I, there is some problem with my, my camera, I think, so it is not getting started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, sir. we could only hear you. Yeah, yeah. That's but earlier you started with your camera only. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it worked then, but suddenly something happened that the camera, it is on, but it is not displaying. It is getting switched off as soon as I uh, try to put it on, it gets switched off again. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sir, my question is, uh, reading literature, making sense of pandemics. Can you throw some light on uh, making sense yeah. of epidemics, uh, reading literature? Making sense of epidemics? Can you throw ah. some light on that? Uh, uh, reading literature, making sense of. So uh, uh, the point is like, how do we make sense of epidemics or pandemics while we read literature? Yeah. Uh, two ways. One, we read literature that how pandemics is dealt uh, in in literature. 
the another is that if it is not dealt why it is absent two way of making sense of uh, pandemics or epidemics in literature if it is there how it is there what is the allegory uh, what are the metaphors if it is not there then what do we read that is how we try to make sense of that so i i discussed lockdown in that like uh, there is a plague of england and then there is india uh, as as we had the first question so when simon armitage is talking about lockdown see the image that he brought from india is a very exotic beautiful image though there are lovers painting uh, the yaksh is sending but then the imagery is so exotic so beautiful it doesn't speak about the rottenness the dead bodies the way it was in im darby region so here it is so this is very interesting paradox that simon armitage is bringing and this gives us a space to try to make a sense of of pandemics in literature from there uh, we discuss that uh, virus and contagion speaks about pandemics but what sense do we make well one says if you destroy ecology you will have this then another says even if you will love animals it is not only eating animals even if you love and care you go to the forest you enclose the space you may come down with with some kind of virus so the context of human and animal so uh, how both the films which are very similar but in a rather different way they they utilize that 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 particular metaphor of contact of humans with animals which was the beginning point of pandemics uh, in, in that way and so that is why in last part to his co mistress and viral modernism we try to read that uh, why we never think ts eliot is also a poet who wrote about uh, pandemics or virginia wolf where are those metaphors how they dealt so that work by outka uh, uh, is is very interesting work to see that how Uh, the writers make use make sense of pandemic uh, in allegorical or metaphorical way in their literatures i re- i remember one more work that is like oedipus also is that example but uh, this decameron uh, boccaccio's decameron uh, also so decameron is a is a collection of short stories uh, a collection of stories and there are various characters they tell story they are sitting at one now see up till now i, I remember i, I referred decameron so many times it's one of the classic works Uh, uh, in Renaissance times and other things, we read that. But the setting of the Cameroon was is very interesting. That there is a plague-stricken town, and so some people, that is rather a rich people, they move out of the town and they go into an isolated uh, mansion, isolated place in 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 forest where nobody comes and goes, and and to pass their time in their lockdown, in their isolation, they are telling stories to each other. so this was also very interesting but up till now uh, we were not making sense of de cameron in context of pandemics uh, uh, there was another work by jen ayer uh, sorry the work jen ayer uh, by bronte bronte uh, uh, jen ayer work also uh, in that work also when people are dying there are couple of deaths because of plague which again was rather not a point of concern if we uh, like if you if you refer to any of the Uh, any of the uh, guide books or guide materials like spark notes or wikipedia or other thing about jen ayer uh, perhaps people never thought that why are people dying what are the reasons of the death of the people now suddenly we say that, oh this was the death because of plague so we are trying to make a sense of plague or pandemics in literature which was there but was not that visible to us up till now now suddenly it is quite interestingly visible to us i think that makes a point for making sense yes, of yes. Uh, yesterday we had a, yeah yesterday we had a paper from uh, on uh, decameron sir vocacious okay, decameron okay, this okay, was the point they were talking about yeah, that was the point so, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's what actually today uh, again morning we had a, a presentation where uh, the the imagery is the things they were bringing upon actually uh, a girl was talking about mask you know ma- uh, mask has become a veil for both men and women nowadays so yeah. It, yeah. it shows a gender inequality and all that so yeah. looking into the other perspective it's really interesting to understand how uh, you know people take literature and how uh, they do it yes yeah that that's that's interesting yeah it was very interesting that yeah, <laughs> yeah. any other questions
I don't know. Sir, post lunch session people are very dull and <laughs> think. <laughs> I am reading comments also. If there is a, any questions in comments. Ah, uh, excuse me, ma'am. I yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Bhuvneshwari, yeah, ma'am. Yes. Ah, uh, Dilip. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, as you said, only those who have voice can express. Only that becomes the culture expressed by the uh, literature. So, can we also say, uh, is it is it right to say, like you know, literature is also biased, uh, just like history? Oh. Obviously, it is obviously because there are lots of work being done in this uh, aspect. Like if the, uh, even if you want to see the tradition of uh, of this thought or this idea, uh, uh, see there is there is a leisure class and there is a working class. Uh, this is obviously a Marxist uh, debate, and uh, and, and uh, when we read even Terry Eagleton, uh, Terry Eagleton uh, definition of literature theory, uh, after theory. So you will obviously so now who is writing literature and who is enjoying literature? Obviously, it is a leisure class, and then there is a working class. So if you go down back before democracy, and before we, before we have service sector, at that time there were landlords, and the landlords were the leisure class people, and the farm laborers were the working class people. Now obviously the farm laborers do not have any time to write or enjoy literature. Rarely ever they get a time to. To read or write it was always the leisure class so they used to write about themselves we we have we have like literatures about kings a lot even in indian tradition if you will see uh, 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 sanskrit tradition is full of literature about kings only so the kings are even obviously belonging to the highest strata of society uh, rather than the other people that's why wordsworth uh, movement of romanticism is very important in english literary tradition he started speaking about poor people peasants that why only the emotions and feelings of uh, city dwellers the rich people are the material of poetry why not about solitary reaper why not about somebody who is uh, just a farm laborer a, a, a farmer like michael why the agony of the farmer is not an agony for uh, the raw material for well people said that these are not poems uh, wordsworth was not accepted as we know the history Uh, and then lyrical ballads. He has to write preface after preface to justify what he is doing. He has to write a lot in his defense uh, to 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 see that what he is writing also is a poem. Uh, the people did not take take uh, took that as poetry at all. Now today we know it's a very interesting chapter. 1798 is the beginning of a new era into the history of literature. But what is he doing? He is challenging the the traditional norms of. Uh, the very idea of poetry, from language to emotions and feeling, artistically embellished to this everywhere. There. So this idea that uh, li literature also has its own prejudices, biases. Who are the writers? Who has got the capacity to write? Everything matters a lot uh, in, in literature, and that is why we always have to uh, question the, the 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 history of the historian also, without questioning the history of the historian. it is now not possible to rely even on histories also thank you sir thank you sir uh, i am vijay lakshmi uh, just to add on to your point even now we were talking about uh, the bias the marginalized uh, uh, the voices uh, for of the marginalized even now in this pandemic lockdown we are able to only hear the expression of the uh upper class the creamy layer people how they are affected even now we don't know what is the impact over the other section of society at present also i hope when uh, to answer vijayalakshmi ma'am question there is a relevance of literature right now there are many writers who are writing the impact of the vulnerable sections who are guiding you having an impact on in this lockdown phase so this would also add as a subject matter or an essence for literature i feel maybe future now what it is written maybe in future it becomes literature of this particular pandemic period in that in the way also we can add on to it yeah yeah very true very truly said now see uh, if you remember the images like when we were going for lockdown in the month of march we obviously most of the people were thinking about it is a good vacation time it will will have we have a family time quality time with family and suddenly after one week when we started seeing the pictures of laborers coming on the road uh, and then then like any sensible indian would be terrified to see that is this the condition of india 
so so many poor people they want to go to their home but we are not allowing them to go to their homes also and we are very happy in our homes any sensible poet any sensible writer can cannot tolerate those scenes of poor people suffering on the road hundreds of kilometers they are walking on the road people are cycling on the road taking their old parents uh, and, and and those those pictures now this was this was never in the mind of many of the indians that we are so poor that so many of our villagers they are working in a very dire and dilapidated situations in urban spaces and, and there is no possibility of having social or physical distancing in, in in the places where they live in cities they are they are so packed in a small 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 rooms uh, eight to ten people living together and suddenly so many people started coming out from the city places moving towards the villages this way those and this should be recorded so when we think of making sense we also have to see that are we going to write literatures about these debates and the discussions that we are living today are we going to record our writers going to record it or not if they do not record then also we will question if they record we will ask for the allegories and metaphors through which they are speaking about uh, this that is how we we tend to make the sense of pandemics uh, in literature that is already written which is perhaps being written and the future in which they might be written also that's what's uh, here in the chat box one of our scholars have uh, given a new term called covid literature maybe from now on we'll have something called covid like in literature yeah yeah yes <laughs> sir dilip sir this is my name Our boy Shri Ma'am wants to ask something. I think. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yeah, ma'am. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, sir, Dilip, sir. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah. Because uh, uh, these days, what's happening is uh, even the marginalized voices are being raised by. Uh, uh but the elite class elite class is not keeping quiet the most educated class is actually talking about the marginalized they are talking about the working class and uh, especially because of the proliferation of uh, uh, i should say proliferation of uh, uh, social media uh, so will there be change in the way reflect uh, literature reflects life now yeah uh, uh, can you please repeat that the key point that you said about social media yeah social media uh, is actually voicing uh, uh the struggles of the working class hmm now nah, okay isn't it yeah. uh, so the divide is uh, not more as of now uh, i'm just seeing twitter uh, anything that happens to the working class the elite class or the mm. so, so called landlords as you put it are actually yeah. uh, raising the voice against the struggles of the uh, uh, so called uh, uh, working class mm. so will that yeah. be a change yeah. in the way literature uh, will take ah, will yes, there be a change yeah. or will there be a turn in the way uh, literature writes down the struggles of people mm -hmm. yes i i think social media is very powerful in 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 controlling the imagination of the people so if the writers are are connected with the voice of the people through social media it is going to have its effect so mm. the, the point that becomes very interesting is that uh, uh, can we have an isolated author who remains away from society and from the top of the mountain or from the deep forest keep on writing about the people's anxiety or we want a writer who is living with the people and talking about the the, the anxieties and happiness of the people that is there the people who are on social media they are going to uh, bring out the polyphony of voices that is that is uh, there in their literature but those who are not on this they don't know what is happening there and perhaps in their literature this will be uh, absent also so sometimes i i feel that uh, all writers of uh, today they should be uh, on social media at least they should observe the the kind of dynamics that are happening uh, yeah, on exactly. social media that becomes very much necessary for today's yeah. writers today's yeah. authors it it actually reflects the mind of people mm -hmm. yeah it reflects the mind of the people of, of course yeah yeah thank there's the collective consciousness of uh, the lived culture yeah exactly thank you sir thank you arbi ma'am ah yes ma'am yes ma'am uh, sir good afternoon sir this is bhuvaneshwari 
so i am fortunate that like i listen to your lectures like two lectures in a month so on web tools and today's on literature so this is not a question actually so with social change there is a linguistic change too in this pandemic situation so the pandemic has many terms so old terms new and familiar and unfamiliar also like infodemic pandemic and pandemic all also so the new language of covid 19 so you have you ha uh, uh, can you just put the key point of your question you it's a very interesting yes, long way you put it or then yeah so yes, sir. yeah okay on, on the on the linguistic on the linguistic aspect the change of covid 19 in the linguistic aspect exactly that is what you are asking yeah okay now say uh, some, one interesting thing i was observing eh, during this was this was about like uh, gujarat i belong to gujarat so i was reading gujarati newspapers and uh, this and then i was obviously reading hindi news channels uh, 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 and newspapers also uh, uh, and then i had a talk with the nearby states here eh, uh, uh, as we know that we, uh, we can't travel all across the states nowadays but somewhere nearby there so what i have seen is that that in in gujarati language newspapers most of the english words related to pandemics were used huh? lockdown pandemics uh, containment zone isolation ward they were not translated but they were used as they are used in english language so one thing english uh, uh, and its global power over other languages is surely ascertained with with the pandemic that uh, most of the Uh, 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 this uh, writers of regional uh, uh, languages they used english words to talk about pandemic and nobody perhaps cared to have a trans even like when we had red zone orange zone green zone now these are more simple words uh, color and we might have translated into a local language also but that also was not done it was red zone or containment uh, or green or orange also now that, that we can see that why have we not translated this term why we subconsciously accepted the english language and the narration of the pandemic that happened in english language will that have any effect on on our way of looking at pandemic because uh, lots of medical terminology is coming along with pandemic and all those medical terminologies again is is, is surely english language so whether we are going to talk about vaccines or whatever way uh, the remedy will come again it is the english language which is going to uh, tell i don't know how far uh, this uh, baba ramdev is popular in in the region from where we have participants uh, but baba ramdev patanjali is quite popular in north and the middle india and he when he he said that i had a medicine i have a medicine for uh, corona virus the ayurvedic medicine he also named coronil now see coronil is a very english word so when uh, uh, patanjali baba ramdev ayurved also thinks of the medicine the things in terms of english language like coronil uh, obviously this becomes a very interesting uh, uh, platform to talk about uh, how linguistically we are looking at but so far it is too early to say anything but right now we can say that uh, it is it is uh, uh, english language which is taken or accepted by everybody without doubt when it comes to talk about or understand anything about pandemic that is what we are seeing we don't remember anything about past epidemics that what happened in 1918 with the language we don't know uh, as we have said it is almost erased from the memory from the history of the people because nobody uh, people no, nobody cared for that we talked about two world wars time and again but we rarely talked about this uh, this this effect uh, uh, will be very interesting to observe now as we are more alert today than we were in 1918 uh, to see that how our language uh, uh, the spaces of uh, linguistic markers are going to change but one thing is your english language as a global language is going to have its own deeper effects uh, in our lives with this
Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I just got a camera on on my another laptop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I switched over from one to the another one now. So it was nice. Uh, good, 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 uh, good organization. Also, uh, you all have done so. Congratulations to all the teachers who are behind the organization. All participants for reading interesting papers also in this uh, webinar. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much.